What's happening, TikTok? Coming back at you with another live stream. You can look for me in the lower starboard side corner of your screen, otherwise known as the lower right hand side of your screen. I will be appearing shortly. I'm going to try and do my due diligence and pay attention to what TikTok wants me to do to succeed doing these live streams, to continue using these live streams, and see if uh, we can get rule one, rule equal performance out of this eventually. So it says here, in the upper part of the screen, that the follower goal is 1,000. 172 forward slash 1,171. Wow. That looks like a very easily attainable goal. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, if you, if you think about the fiction system, the way things are written, how can you get 1,172 out of 1,171? Either we... Either the goal succeeded or we just need one person to follow to achieve the goal. No idea what that means. Okay, but today I'm going to be auditing a website that was pointed out to me by one of my students. And I'm going to show that to you right now. Let me get to it here. All right, there I am. So you see here, this website. Now, me showing you this presupposes that you already know at least a little bit about the grammar technology known as correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar, i.e. quantum grammar. That you're interested at least in the topic, otherwise why would you be here? And this video is, I am doing it on TikTok, but I can guess that it's going to get a lot of hits on YouTube, which is my main social media platform at this juncture in the now space, at this location in the now space, simply because that's where I have the most subscribers. And I've been there the longest and I have the most content there as opposed to here. But I am growing TikTok. So over there, in a lot of videos, I will do audits of correct sentence structure teachers or people that claim to know the grammar technology known as correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. I'll look at their grammar and point out what's correct with it, what's not correct with it. And if there, if there are mistakes, I will tell them how to fix the mistakes. Because that's rule one, rule equal, folks. If you present a problem, you have to present a solution. That is the right way to do a stop and correct. You can't just tell someone that they're doing something wrong, but if you don't know how to do it right, you have no business telling them anything. And people, if you're curious about my credentials, I challenge you to find at least, at least one other individual on the internet that has over 800 Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parse Syntax Grammar videos on their channel that they themselves created, not reposting of David Wim Miller's seminars or whatever, content that they themselves created and edited and published, which I've been doing since February of 2018. And I've taught hundreds of people all over the earth since that time as well. So those are my credentials. I'll take the Pepsi challenge with anyone as far as the grammar goes. But 
That doesn't matter. That's a moot point because no one would ever step up onto the geometric level playing field with me as far as a grammar challenge. I've tried it. Nobody will. So I hope you got your coffee or whatever beverage of choice. We're going to get into looking at this particular website, which is titled For the Omstead.com. And right away, um, what is this? Let's open this in a new tab and see what this means. Same, same page. All right. Doesn't mean anything. This word, Omstead, I'm very curious about. Sounds very close to Homestead. So let's see if that's even historically a word in the fiction system. The surname Umstead is derived from the old French word ermite, which means hermit, and the old English word stead, which means place. The name may also be an angelicized form of the German surname, which is derived from... Okay, so there is no plain English historical continuance of the evidence for this word. But I have a feeling it's some sort of connection to Homestead. So that's just a guess. Because they don't give closure to what it means on this website. So as far as the grammar goes, we can look up here. We see a full colon, a space, and then an A. Which right off the bat is not correct. And I'm going to explain why it's not correct. All right, look at this sentence right here, which is the sentence that was at the top of the web page that I just showed you that we will be going back to shortly. This is not correct for the reason that every correct sentence structure must start with a cause and end with a concern. So it would look something like this. So for the facts of the facts are with the facts by the facts. In correct sentence structure, uh, there's a part of, part of speech called the positional. There are four positionals. For, of, with, and by. Are is the verb in this case. But what we want to focus on are the positionals. For, of, with, and by. For is the cause of the sentence. Of is the concern of the sentence. With is the possessive of the sentence, and by is the authority of the sentence. So when you read it backwards, by becomes for, of becomes with. Just like 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. The for, of, with, and by perform the function of the plus and the minus sign in that analogy. So when you use punctuation, because in correct sentence structure, the full colon would represent position lodial phrases. So to write out for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, by the facts, using full colons, instead of the for the, of the, with the, by the, you would write it like this. You see that? You see that the colon has no space there, but here 
there is a space after the colon. Just like here, there is a space after the colon. But here, there is no space after the colon. It's tied up against the F in facts. Why? Because if the colon is tied up against the fact and it comes at the beginning of the sentence, it always means for the. And then if it comes at the end of the sentence after the verb, it means by the, because for is congruent with by. A better way to give an example of that would be to write a name. Like my name, for example. For the Jason Matthew of the glass. Now, the way to write that in quantum grammar shorthand, which is a term that I coined along with my tutor, full colon, raven, hyphen, farhide, hyphen, tohidi, colon, efferin, you would write it like this. Sorry. This says the same thing as this. For the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. For the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. If you put a space between that colon and the Jason hyphen Matthew, it now becomes of the, which is not correct because every sentence must start with a cause for the every sentence every name every title whatever it is it must always start with for the for the mathematical interface to be correct so this would be incorrect it has to be this i hope that's clear so now, when we look at this title that was at the top of that page, you see why this is not correct. If it were to be correct, the colon would have to be tight up against the A. For the Amstead, comma, space. For a self-governing hyphen community of the fellowship and support. Now, on its face, if there were no space between this colon and this A, if it were written correctly, this is not a bad sentence. But this is actually, there are a couple little technical things. In order for this to be completely correct, if you want to use the hyphen in there, I'm sorry, if you want to use this comma in here, you would not have that. But be it as, it as it may, let's take it on its face. So as it stands, that is a pronoun. And then it throws everything else into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, babble. For, F-O-R, is a pronoun. A is an adverb. Self-governing community is an adjective. Of is a pronoun. The is an adverb. Fellowship is a verb. The ampersand is an and, which is a conjunction, and support is a dangling participle verb. There are particles of negation in these facts, such as SUP, NING. This is not correct sentence structure. So one way to correct it, as I was showing you earlier, would be this. Also, also, you notice that the Amstead is all capitals, capitalized. Why wouldn't they all cap the other facts as well? Why the inconsistency? So one way to write it to be correct would be this.
So you have a word like support, but you have the particle of negation SUP in there, which means the same thing as sub, which means it's under something. It's not the thing, it's under the thing. So how would you find a positive performance word for that? Well, it's pretty easy. I can think of one off the bat. You can say aid, you can say help, but we'll use aid. So now we have a correct sentence structure here. For the Olmstead and self-governed community of the fellowship and aid. That is correct sentence structure. If you want to, for clarity's sake, you can put the ING in brackets there. And if you want to punctuate it, you can do this. For the Olmstead and self-governed community of the Fellowship Aid. That would be the correct way to do it. All right, so let's go back to the website itself. How do I do that? Uh-oh. Okay, there we go. Now we're back. All right. So, as you can see up here highlighted, that's what I was just uh, auditing. The grammar on the very first sentence on the page is not correct. It's pronoun, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, conjunction, dangling participle, verb. So as you can see, there are spaces between colons and these other words. So none of this is correct. None of it. And you see here where it says colon space learn hyphen syntax colon. This colon is what I call a dangling participle colon. Because a colon represents a position lodial phrase, as I just gave you closure in that lesson. Well, there's no fact that follows this colon, so it's just dangling there. That is not correct. You would put a full stop there, just like they did with shop and documents. <clears throat> but for some reason, they didn't. For the lifelong security. Security, the SEC or the SE in security is no contract. That's a particle of negation. Of yourself. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Your lifestyle and your loved ones. Particle of negation with the O in front of the N in ones. And then, of course, the colon mistake. Another dangling participle colon. So this grammar is horrendous. And I would expect no less from someone that learned from colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould, which I'm guessing from this style that that is who this individual learned from. Because I can look at someone's grammar style and tell exactly what the roots of their teaching are. So listen in with the audio. Postmaster teacher Paul Douglas Jubinville has a guest speaker on a Chief's Patreon call. Hmm. Why don't we listen in on that a little bit? Greetings, everyone. This is October 15th, 2021, and that a grammatical fact. Russell Hyphen J. Cool and Gould in his venue for quite a while. I'm going to let him give a little bit of a background about himself. Um, this is the first one that we've done like this. As you guys know, uh, Chief is usually here to answer all of our queries, and um, I know there's great value on that by the uh, patrons, and so we will be be glad to get back to that um, as soon as Chief has uh, finished traveling. So it's Chief's Patreon call, but Chief's not there. So people paid 
to be on a Chief's Patreon call, but Chief is not there. So let's let's look listen to this one. Maybe he's here. Okay. Officially recording now. Thank you, everyone. See, Living Natural Trainer is saying she's not getting or he's not getting any sound. So just her and the correct sentence structure. It's all of commerce. If we're contracting into false or fictitious upon it or we or something of that effect. Well, when we just start taking those ACT words, vowel followed by two consonants, it, it actually brings it to a negative state of beings. Uh, so it brings... Actually, any word that begins with a vowel followed by a consonant at the beginning of the word is no contract. Doesn't matter if it's a vowel followed by one consonant, two consonant, three consonant, four consonant. Does not matter. It's no contract if it's vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. Acting is just a no contract word. It's more is that home that warehouse giddy up and go is there slow down <laughs> my stuff which will be on a membership site uh, it'll come up in the next couple of weeks or so type deal uh you know it's anything here acting. that causes me to believe okay of course they don't they're seeing a bunch of babble so they're giving <laughs> giving you it's a feudal system get a couple of people up there to have a connection now but typically i'm spending time out in like a 30-foot rv uh you know mm -hmm. hanging out all right, so that's enough of that. This person claims to be a syntax teacher. Syntax, in the context of correct sentence structure, means, um, as you can see behind me, the syntax key. There are 10 parts of speech, conjunction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, position, lodial, fact, uh, past tense, future tense. And syntaxing would be banking those values on word on words so um let me see here greetings venue learners and curious onlookers oh my goodness onlookers this is what i'm talking about I, I gotta go back to the other word document real quick and show you the type of grammar that russell j gould has sanctioned or has authorized hold on how hyphen r hyphen you, hyphen doing, hyphen today, comma, space, seriously, and instead of the L-Y, using an L-I. This is a great example of what I'm talking about. This is just a fiction babble sentence with some punctuation in it. It is not correct sentence structure. It is what I call quantum gobbledygook. If you're going to use plain, simple English and try to pass it off as correct sentence structure. Why do that? Why confuse the issue? Just write using plain, simple English. Maybe put it in brackets. Just do that. Or do this. Or do this. It's much easier for your reader to read something like that than to read something like this. I mean, folks, it's not that hard. It really is not. I'm telling you, it's not that hard. Now, all right, how would you translate something like this into an actual correct quantum grammar sentence? Let's find out. So the sentence must start with a cause. Let, let's go full blast, all right? Full blast. We're going we're gonna to make a complete, all-inclusive, correct sentence structure thought. I'm going to write it out, and then I'm going to reverse engineer it for you.
Okay. Here is a complete correct sentence structure claim that would translate this into correct sentence structure. Instead of colon how hyphen are hyphen you hyphen doing hyphen today comma space seriously. Instead of that, I have written for the claimant's knowledge of the cognition is with the claimant's knowledge. I'm sorry, for the claimant's sensation of the cognition is with the claimant's knowledge of the facts, with the claim of the query, with the condition of the state, with the location of the viewer, with the query conveyance by the claimant and querent. So up here we have how are you doing today? So in this case, we're going to guess that you means you, the viewer, since I'm the one making the claim and I may only make claims for myself, I'm speaking to you. How are you doing today? So I'm asking about your condition of state. And it's a query. There are no particles of negation in my facts. They're all positive performance. Up here, we have particle of negation, vowel in front of a consonant in R. We have particle of negation, ing. We have particle of negation, to, which is future tense. We have a fiction pronoun in here. I mean, it's just all types of wrong stuff going on there. So this is the correct sentence. And the way that you would read it backwards would be, for the claimant and querent, of the query conveyance is with the viewer of the location, with the state of the condition, with the query of the claim, with the facts of the claimant's knowledge, with the cognition by the claimant's sensation. So forwards, what is the cause of the, well, let me graph it here real quick. And so that might be easier for the viewer, especially the beginning viewer to better cognize what it is I'm sharing. Okay. So the cause of the sentence is the claimant's sensation. That is the source of where this claim is coming from. My sensation, my port of sensation, my five senses, my five plus senses. What is the sensation concerned with? The cognition, my understanding of those sensations. Since we have our cause and concern, now we put our verb of the thinking in, which would be is, which is the only verb in correct sentence structure, and it is singular because claimant sensation is singular. Now we follow with the possessive. The claimant's, what is the cognition, what is possessing the cognition? The claimant's knowledge, my knowledge. And what's the knowledge concerned with? The facts. What's possessing the facts? This claim. What is it a claim of? It's a query. I'm questioning something. It's a query. What's possessing the query? The condition. What's the condition concerned with? The state. What's possessing the state? The location. What's the location concerned with? The viewer. You. What's possessing the viewer? The query conveyance, because I'm asking you, how are you doing? It's a query. And who is the authority of this query conveyance? I am, as the claimant and querent. And let me put my name in there. There. So backwards, for the claimant and querent, comma space, Jason Ife and Matthew Colin Glass becomes the cause of the sentence. I'm the source of the claim. So what is the claimant and querent concerned with? Query conveyance. I'm asking a question, a query. I'm making a query claim. Now we have our two position lodial fact phrases. Cause and concern, now we put our verb of the thinking in, which would be, again, singular is. Followed by the possessive. What is the query 
conveyance being possessed by the viewer because i'm asking you the viewer a question what's the viewer concerned with the location the viewer is the location as opposed to me i'm a different location see what i'm saying you could even do this Put a tilde in front of the viewer if you want to, because tilde denotes location. What is possessing the location? The state. What is the state concerned with? The condition. What's the condition being possessed by? The query. I'm asking a question. What is the query concerned with? The claim. Because everything is a claim, and this is a query claim. What's possessing the claim? The facts. What's, what are the facts concerned with? The claimant's knowledge, my knowledge. What's possessing the knowledge? My cognition, my understanding. And what is the authority of that cognition? By the claimant's sensation. My port of sensation, the place where data comes in and docks. I am the port authority of that port of sensation. So there you go. That's your grammar lesson for today. I wasn't really planning on doing that, but I'm showing you something, okay? I'm showing you that I know this stuff like the back of my hand, inside and out, forwards and backwards. All right? All right, so this individual claims to be a teacher, but yet I've shown you that their grammar is completely horrendous and not correct so let's look at uh oh my goodness so we have a number system here we have zero one two three there is no colon in front of the tilde in the zero so that automatically throws everything into adverb verb adjective pronoun fiction bullshit the reason being and again, let's go back to the Word document for the facts, all right? If you would syntax that, that would be five, six, seven. For the facts, five, six, seven. Because fact is a fact, fact is a seven. Two is certification, position lodial, and in fact. Now you have authorization, three elements. Or as I did an analogy in one of my older videos from like 2018, in boxing, the positional, the four, would be the jab. Uh, the lodial, the, would be the hook. And then the facts would be the straight right. A little amusing analogy for you there. So that's how you position a fact. If a fact is a fact on paper, it must be positioned by positional lodial phrases. If I just write that, that is a pronoun. Tilde one is a pronoun because it has not been positioned. It would have to be positioned like this. For the one, or as I showed you earlier, colon tilde one, period. These two things are the same, say the same thing, but I have position them correctly with a position lodial phrase. Otherwise, if one is just standing there by itself, tilde one, maybe it's got a uh, dash after it. That is just a pronoun. That's a pronoun standing by itself because it has not been positioned correctly. What is this? So let's check out the forthephonetics.com. Let's see what that is. Oh my goodness. For the performance harmonization of each node in the closure system. In the closure system. How does that work? If you have four positionals, folks, four of, with, and by. Four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. Four is cause, of is concern, with is possessive, by is authority. 
One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. How does in figure into that? What's congruent with in? Out. So if you read that backwards, out the closure system. So you're no longer in the system, you're out of it. Makes absolutely no sense. Goodness. Whoa, what did that say? $1,000? Wait, no, $1 million? You have got to be kidding me. One? I hope full colon Raven hyphen Farhide hyphen Tahiti colon Afarin is watching this video. I hope colon Ricardo colon Marseille is watching this video. One million dollars to take a syntax test when this freaking guy doesn't have the first clue. Oh my goodness. You want to talk about a scam? I wonder if anyone has ever paid for that. Folks out there, does anybody know anyone who's ever paid a million dollars for a syntax test? Oh my goodness. Look, for a 60 minute meeting with the teacher, click here. One hour, one hundred dollars. A sixty-minute meeting, one hundred dollars. For as far as this domain goes, and correct sentence structure and teaching and online stuff, that's not an unfair price. That that is a fair value for a meeting. However. You're not going to be getting correct knowledge. You're not going to be getting correct grammar. That's the only problem. What's the 30 minute? I wonder what's, is it going to be 50? Oh yeah, it is 50. Okay, good. All right. So, um, oh, the film Piercing Dynasty. Ugh. I'm not even going to go there. Documents. What do we got in the documents section? Canada Constitution Treaty, Australian Sovereign Flag Treaty, Styles Manual. This ought to be interesting. Uh... Their styles manual for correct sentence structure is a fiction styles manual? Wow. This begs belief. This is unreal. Ooh. 12B7 through 12B1. Look at this. None of the numbers have been positioned correctly. Which means this is all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. For the summary corrections of the document claim list, document claims 12B, for the DCC 12B7 of the joining R with the claims of the venue authority, hyphen, italics, jurisdiction, which means it's not on the page. With the authorization by the, and then they have the dollar store quotations to apostrophes, law of the flag document. 
which means there is no fact after by the because it's been taken off the page according to their fiction styles manual. This is 12b7 through 12b1. Check it out, folks. I got something for you right here. This is my website, okay? Now, where I could and where it allowed me to, I used correct sentence structure. You see the colons are tied up against the facts. Now, I have nothing to do with this more. I have no way to take that off the page. So, unfortunately, there is going to be some correct, incorrect things on this page. But what I want to show you is... This is my blog, by the way. There's colon Ricardo colon Marseille. And that's myself right there. Uh, when I went down to my wife and, and I and, uh, and the children went down to Florida and uh, met up with Ricardo. He's my best student and a great friend and brother. So I'm going to show you the... Twelve B seven through twelve B one. Here we go. Compare this with this. For the summary corrections of the civil claim methods are with the twelve B by the document contract claims and DCCTC. Twelve B seven of the DCTC is with the claims of the same authority jurisdiction with the rule of the flag by the contract terms. For the rule of the contract parties is with the terms of the vessel's contract with the label of the pictograph and symbol with the flag of the contract with the terms of contract rules with the completion of the contract with the contract court by this claim. That's 12B7. That's how I wrote it. And let's see how they wrote it. Their 12B7, I'll read it again, says, For the 12B7 of the joining are with the claims of the venue authority with the authorization by the period. This is correct sentence structure, folks. And by the way, this is available for free on my website. jason matthew Glass. Dot weebly com. Go ahead on over there and you can study this if you'd like to. In brief, the summary corrections 12B7 through 12B1 are joined her with the flag, statement of the claim, service of the methods, methods of the service, position of the venue, authority of the matter, and authorization claim with authority. Um, it's basically how you create a correct sentence structure document contract postal vessel court venue. So let's get back to this dude's stuff here. Freight way bills. <clears throat> now besides the fact that this is not correct sentence structure because every sentence starts with a colon space and we have particle negations all over the place educationally for those intermediate students it's good to know these terms bills of the lading freight way bills transit way bills switching way bills straight way bills but if you're going to use these words in your contracts, I would highly recommend doing your research, doing your study, and come up with your own correct sentence structure, finite means and closures. And don't use these because these are pretty freaking far from correct. And this is coming from an individual who styles themselves as a teacher of syntax. And quite honestly, I have not seen one example of his syntaxing. I've seen examples of his attempts at quantum grammar, which is basically quantum gobbledygook. But I've not seen any example of syntax. Sixty nine lessons, one million dollars for his beginner syntax course. 
folks. If you want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you can contact me at the email address jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, which you can find in the bio of this TikTok channel, and apply for a workshop. Please include your full correct name at the bottom of your email so I know who you are. You know my name. I ask the same consideration to you. The consultation, I'll schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consultation, which costs nothing except for your now space. If you want to learn this stuff and you want to find out more, you can contact me. That's my gift to you. One million dollars to learn shit syntax. Isn't that not so funny? Goodness. In this short video, you learn the syntax teacher's credentials. Where? Where's the video? There is no video. Isn't that convenient? You can't access anything. Wow. Eight parts of the speech. There are ten parts of speech. Five rules of syntax. There are absolutely no examples of syntax here. Goodness gracious. There's really no way to qualify this guy. Well, I just showed exactly what his level of qualification is and with my assessment as a tutor who has been teaching correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar for almost six years, this guy is advanced beginner at the most, and that's being generous. There is no example of his syntaxing. His correct sentence structure is horrible. But I did show him how to fix it if he watches this video or watches this live stream. That is crazy. And this guy is authorized by colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello, Virtuous3 and B-T-O-N-M-O-N. -O -N. Appreciate your viewership. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them, because that's what I'm here to do, answer your questions. Let me get rid of this crap. Uh, let me think of something interesting to do here.
My first time seeing your page. I've been studying since 2018 using David Miller videos and book. 2018. Okay, so if that's the case there, Virtuos, Virtuous 3, if you can see my screen there, <clears throat> the can of beans that sits on shelves suddenly smells blatantly bad. Why don't you go ahead and syntax that for me? Just write out the numbers, whether it's an adverb, verb, adjective, or pronoun, or past tense, future tense. Uh, use your 18, let's see, 19, 20, 22, 23, your five years of studying. Let's see what you got there, if you don't mind. Go ahead and syntax that. Um, and it's nothing to be embarrassed about at all, because what I try to do myself is cultivate humility. And that's why I put myself up here and put myself on the spot, in the spotlight, on the carpet. I know that everyone, can you see my screen there, Virtuous? If you see my screen, <clears throat> the sentence is on the screen. Can you see the screen? I'll enlarge the the text a little bit for you. There, I enlarged it for you. You should be able to read it. Go ahead and syntax that. Now, anybody who has very confident, correct closure on syntax, should be able to do that sentence, syntax it in like 20 seconds. 30 seconds at the most. If you truly have closure on correct sentence structure, you, you will be able to syntax that sentence that quick. Now I realize, you know, you gotta type it in the comments and all that, there are extraneous circumstances. But, uh, Someone who has closure will be able to, boom, do it just like that. I appreciate you participating in this. This is great. Now, for those of you uh, that are new to this, while virtuous three is syntaxing the sentence, I will tell you there are five syntax scenarios. There's adverb verb, there's adjective pronoun, pronoun, adverb verb, pronoun, adjective. I'm sorry, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and adverb, adjective, pronoun. Those are the five syntax scenarios. One adverb would never modify another adverb because they're non-tangible contract. However, adjectives can modify other adjectives because they are tangible contract. So Virtuous 3, whenever you're finished, just pop in the numbers in the comments and I will copy and paste those numbers in the appropriate places on the screen and then we'll go over and see, see how you did. <clears throat> While we're waiting, I will say that it's nearly impossible to get closure on correct sentence structure just from watching <clears throat> David Wynn Miller videos. Also, I do not recommend Colin David Eiffel Wynn Colin Miller's book for beginners because there are errors all over it. Dozens and dozens and dozens of errors in this book. The grammar is not correct at all in this book. 
So I do not recommend it. Now for those intermediate advanced students, this book can give you a good idea of how to format templates. Um, but other than that, for the grammar, it is not recommended. Now I've gone through a painstaking process of creating thousands of hours of content on my YouTube channel where you can actually learn the grammar about 75 to 80 percent of the grammar just from watching my YouTube channel alone. That's the depth of detail I've gone into. Virtuous says for the blatant... So <sighs> Virtuous, do you know what I mean when I say syntax? What you did there was you made an attempt to translate that sentence into correct sentence structure. That's not what I was asking. I was asking you to syntax it. I was asking you to point out the modifications. When I say syntax the sentence, that means show me where the adverbs are, the verbs, the adjectives, the pronouns, the one, twos, threes, or fours. Show me where those are. I didn't ask you to, to uh, translate the sentence into a correct sentence structure. You're asking me, do you want me to number them? What I want you to do, what I was asking you to do is syntax it. So I don't think you, I don't think maybe you don't know what syntax is or what it means in the context of correct sentence structure. And you said, I am learning more from TJ um, from, with I am law. Well, it makes sense that you wouldn't know what syntax is because TJ and that website, they don't know correct sentence structure. It's the same thing that I just showed you, only they're like a level below the guy that I'm showing you on here, the guy that I was auditing. What TJ and the UR Law website know how to do is parse. They can point out particles of negation, but they don't know how to write correct sentence structure and they don't know how to syntax. I can tell you that 100%. I've done audits on that channel as well. So let's look at your sentence real quick that you offered there, your translation. For the blatant sudden bad smell of the can of beans are with the sitting on the shelves. So you start with the cause, for the blatant. But we have sudden bad smell. So in correct sentence structure, if that were to be a compound fact, you have to hyphenate those each word so that that becomes a compound fact. So you have five, six, seven, and then five, six, seven, but you didn't do that. There are two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb for the facts of the facts, are, with the facts of the facts, with the facts by the facts. Cause, concern, verb, possessive, concern, possessive, authority. One and one is one, one word, one meaning, one congruency, one function. On is not a positional. The only positionals are for, of, with, and by. Because if you were to try and read this backwards, it would say off the shelves wouldn't it? Off the shelves of the sitting are, and then you have of beans, which you would need a lodial in between there, of the beans, so on and so forth. But I think you catch my drift. Yes, you wrote a fictitious conveyance of grammar there, which I commend you. I appreciate that. A lot of people don't have the cojones to, to try that. So I appreciate that, and I applaud you for stepping forward and volunteering to participate with this little experiment. So this is also a fictitious conveyance of grammar, just like your sentence. To syntax this sentence, it's very simple. The is an adverb. Can is a verb. Of is an adverb. Beans is a verb. That is an adverb. Sits is a verb. On is an adverb. 
Shelves is a verb. Suddenly is an adverb. Smells is a verb. Blatantly is an adverb. And bad is a dangling participle verb. Very easy. Adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb. The is non-tangible contract. Which means it cannot be an adjective. Which means it's either going to be an adverb, a verb, or a pronoun. It's followed by a tangible contract word, can, which is followed by non-tangible contract word, of. So, the is a non-tangible contract adverb modifying tangible contract verb, or tangible contract can, into a verb. Of is a non-tangible contract adverb modifying tangible contract beans into a verb. That is a non-tangible contract adverb modifying tangible contract sits into a verb. On is non-tangible contract adverb modifying shelves into a verb. Suddenly, because of this, sorry, what the hell? particle of negation ly is non-tangible contract because the ly is a poison suffix that poisons the tangibility of a word into non-tangibility. It literally kills the tangibility of a word. Let's go ahead and point out the rest of the particles in negation real quick. Any vowel in front of a consonant is a particle of negation. I'm going to mark those in yellow. Ly is uh, a particle of negation. So, suddenly is non-tangible contract adverb modifying tangible contract smells into a verb. And then blatantly, again... The L-Y poisons the tangibility of a word. It's now an adverb modifying bad into a verb, a dangling participle verb. And what I mean by dangling participle verb is, what is a verb? Verb is thinking. It's motion. It's thinking. But the verb is coming at the end. There's nothing left to think about. So it's just dangling there. Dangling participle verb. Virtuous three. Whomever you are, I appreciate you and applaud you for coming forward to participate a little bit with this stuff. And it's an example of someone like they said, I don't know who they are, what their correct name is or anything. And I'm not going to ask them to provide their correct name because a lot of people get squeamish about that. Um, don't you need to put is or are in the sentence? In which sentence? I'm not sure what you mean. Can you write that phrase in correct sentence structure? Why would you? It's a fiction babble sentence that really makes no sense. Um, that's why it's fiction babble. The only time I put something in the correct sentence structure is if I'm going to use it for a contract. But anyways, to continue back with what I'm saying, um, it's a great example because they said they've been studying since 2018. So that's 1920, 21, 22, 23. It's about five years of study. And by my estimation as a tutor, they're barely at the beginner level of this stuff. They had no idea what I meant when I said syntax the sentence. They completely misunderstood it or did not misunderstood it, but they didn't know what I was talking about. And they don't know the correct sentence structure, concatenation, and positional sequencing. They didn't know the four positionals, so on and so forth. So what I'm saying to you, and I'm not picking on anybody at all, um, because if you're going to learn this stuff, you definitely have to have thick skin. It's not a joke. It's a commitment. <clears throat> and if you want to learn this stuff, you can go over to www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. You will find over 800 videos. You'll find a parse playlist, a syntax playlist, a correct sentence structure playlist where I give closure to all of these things, explain them from all different angles and depths of data and knowledge cultivation. Free to you. But the best way to learn it is to find a tutor that knows what they're talking about. 
And if you feel that I'm that tutor, you can contact me at my email address, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop if you're serious about it. I mean, you spent five years and you're still at beginner level. It took me 2,000 hours of study with a tutor before I could even use this stuff. And now I'm about, I'm over 30,000 hours of study and performance right now. But I do this stuff every day. I don't do anything else. This is what I do. So if you're interested in, interested in learning, go ahead and contact me. In Virtuous 3, you're very welcome. If you do decide to contact me, and if you do decide to apply for a workshop, please include your full correct name. Not your nom de guerre Virtuous 3. Although you can include that and say, hey, this is Virtuous 3 from TikTok. My correct name is blah, blah, blah. And then include your full correct name because you know my full correct name. I just ask the same consideration of you for rule one rule equal performance. But I do appreciate you coming on here and being a good sport about all this stuff. This video will be edited and reposted to YouTube in the TikTok playlist if you want to rewatch this. Um... Thanks. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.